This is Sam Goldwyn in Hollywood. This is Vivian Lee in London. This is uh, Ken Tynan in New York. This is Small World, and this is Ed Murrow in New York. Good evening. Tonight on Small World, the world of motion pictures. From London, one of the greatest actresses of our time, Vivian Lee Olivier. Miss Lee won an Oscar in 1938 for her Scarlett O'Hara, another one in 1951 for her Streetcar Named Desire, and all kinds of awards for her stage portrayal of Cleopatra. Miss Lee is talking to us from her apartment in London. Good evening, Grandma. Good evening, and thank you. And from Hollywood, a man who had to get up at 5 o'clock in the morning in order to be with Miss Lee. Mr. Samuel Goldwyn, a pioneer and a giant, who gave us Dodsworth, Wuthering Heights, best years of our life, but whose greatest picture is always the next one, which in this case is Porgy and Bess. And from New York, a young Englishman who, if not angry, is at least opinionated, Kenneth Tynan, drama critic of the London Observer, now on loan to the New Yorker magazine for a one-year hit. Mr. Tynan, I think I should warn you that Mr. Goldwyn is not always enthusiastic about the critiques that appear in the New Yorker. <laughs> I, I have great respect for the New Yorker. I think it's one of the fine magazines that's come out in my time. But I do not quite agree with the criticism that the New Yorkers are writing. As a matter of fact, I heard about your review yesterday in the New Yorker of Rogers and Hammerstein's show a Japanese girl playing a Chinese girl. You took exception to that. Well, the only th since we're talking about Miss Lee, I always like to talk about her anyway. <laughs> she played the Southern Belle in two pictures she was in. And that was, uh, what was the name of the first play that she gave that great performance and she won a, uh, that was a picture Selznick did with her. Gone with, with the Wind. Night. Gone with the Wind. Gone with the something. And she won an Oscar. She distinguished herself again when she played, which she did a wonderful job in Streetcar called Desire, also a Southern Belle. I always refer to her as a Belle anyway. And tell me, how do you account for your criticism of Chi uh, Japanese girls playing Chinese girls or Chinese girl playing Japanese girls. What has that got to do with it? Well, I think if you're going to present the, uh, the Chinese people authentically and as they ought to be presented on a stage, you've got to pay some kind of respect to their, their origins and their culture, their appearance, and, and get a, a kind of authenticity that uh, I felt didn't exist in that show because there are differences of uh, background and uh, temperament between Chinese and, um, Ken, and Japanese which are tremendously marked. Uh, Ken, you might as well say that uh, no English actor should play in a Chekhov play or in an Ibsen play. If the entire cast English or um, German, okay. But what does it matter if they're artists? Hmm? But does it matter very much if they, if they know what they're doing? Uh, atmosphere is completely destroyed by this sort of uh, lack of homogene homogeneity, you know. By the way, you know I was the only English member of the cast of Streetcar, and uh, so, and that didn't seem to make very much difference. Well, it did to me, honestly, dear, because of that. I mean, in, in an entirely English cast, splendid, but you did, at least to, to, to an untrained ear such as as mine, stick out a little bit as being not quite in the same style as the other people in the film. Well, I have to try again and get better, that's all. <laughs> Mr. Tynan, mm -hmm. whom I uh, have great respect for, how is it that about 300 million people all over the world saw Gone with the Wind? And Wonderful she received film. Oscars all around the place. Wonderful film, How is it that they liked her in the role? Oh, I don't think I was um, intending that, Mr. Galvin. I was, was saying, that? in a film of that kind, I think she was marvelous. I, I thought Vivian was absolutely perfect in that, because, as I said, it sort of set in the past, and uh, in a costume picture, um, I think that kind of thing is absolutely okay. I think truth is the keynote of all acting, or of all artists. And I don't really understand what Ken's saying, because I don't think you would call it a stylized film in any way. It's not like an 18th century comedy, for instance. It was perfectly human story, and as modern as they come, really. 
The fact that you wear a costume doesn't make any difference to your mind. And if your mind is truthfully playing the character you're supposed to be playing, the costumes and whether you will have a fan in your hand or anything, it doesn't make any difference at all. Isn't there something, though, in those two parts, Vivian, the uh, streetcar part and the uh, Skull to Hara one, didn't they both have this strange quality of vulnerableness? You know, girls who were easily breakable, who were, who were um, suffering terribly. So I can. Uh, I and, think mm. they were entirely different people. But I mean, it seemed to didn't me. they have that in common? These were girls that were going to be, uh, you know, knocked around by, by all kinds of agonies and... Um, oh, knocked around is one thing. I think they were both knocked around quite a bit, but one overcame the knocking around and the other one succumbed. Yes. And therefore they were innately different, it seemed to me. But then the only interesting thing, I think, is to play as many different things as possible. I think typecasting and type acting is one of the menaces, really because you get used to what somebody's going to do, and then there, it holds no surprise for you. And if you're not going to be surprised in life, um, it's a pity, I think. Why do you think you get cast so often as um, Southern Bells, Vivian? I can't imagine. I must have lived there in some incarnation or ever, or something, you know. I really don't know. I, only twice, you know. Yeah. Only twice in, uh, oh, how many years? Twenty? So that's not many. Miss Lee mentioned typecasting, which of course is a product of the star system. And I suppose one reason that she has not been typed is the fact that she is a genuine actress as well as a star. Isn't the definition of a uh, star though, Vivian, uh, a girl who can stare into a camera and convince every man out there that she needs him and cannot <laughs> exist without him? Well, no, I don't think that applies. Entirely. It, she may uh, think she wants to um, uh, say that to everybody, men, women and children. I don't think men are all that important. But I mean, isn't there a special kind of hungering, yearning, needing expression which the Garbo had, which Marlena Dietrich has, and I also think you have it, this sort of look of unutterable need and uh, everybody in the audience feels, my goodness, she needs me. I my goodness, me. Ken. I think that a certain waif-like, if you like, not, I don't mean waif-like, but I, I think people shouldn't appear too sure uh, of themselves because they probably aren't, as a rule. Is that what you mean? Yes, but I mean, is there anything else which um, differentiates uh, star quality from uh, ordinary um, competence? I, I haven't the faintest idea. I only know that... Um, a star to me is somebody who makes me uh, feel that I don't understand quite what they're doing, but I feel there's a sort of magic about it. I, I don't know what it is. Garbo certainly had it, and to me, Brigitte Bardo has it. Now, Sam, Ken Tynan started a considerable controversy in Europe when he said that the drama as an art form had to be concerned with politics. How do you feel about that? How do I feel about it? Yes. I think the duty of a producer is to produce plays or pictures that the public will enjoy when they go into the theater. I think politics is a documentary problem. I do believe this, that when you leave the theater you have to carry away something with you that is close to people's heart, that touches on their daily life and they understand the characters. But I do not agree with Mr. Tainan at all that politics, every time anyone has tried to do that in a picture or a play, they usually came out so that they couldn't pay their payrolls every week. Can I comment on that, Ed? Please do. When I say that art ought to be, in some way, a political activity, what I mean is that it can't help it. Every act that anybody performs has some kind of a uh, political um, repercussion.